it's a reference system effectively yeah. is what I'm hearing yeah. that's what that's what you want is a reference sorry gentleman there Henry, you're our compliance officer sitting on the panel. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The, actually, uh, I'm currently uh, working on a, uh, a position paper for Jericho on this very subject. And basically, uh, just, just to bring this in context, uh, basically we're looking at, okay, Jericho is creating a change. So the question here is, this change, what's the impact to the current IT audit framework or control framework, and what is the risk? And the risk basically is that if there's a gap between the current practice of the auditors, and, and I can give a few examples of, of their framework, then certainly that gap translates to a potential risk. Right? And, and currently, the, the current thinking is, in terms of understanding the risk, is to look at, uh, let's say, the big four, they very much follow uh, what we call the COVID. Uh, I think maybe a few of you are uh, familiar with the COVID uh, IT control framework. So one of the things that we're planning is actually to take the Jericho principles and then you know, examine or measure against the COVID framework to see at least at the principal level, do we have a major gap there? And a gap basically then you have to understand is that a, a major risk for future audit and, and the way that they actually do the audit or their approach. And then if the principles are fine, you know, because maybe uh, the way that COVID is written is fairly generic, then we also want to go down to the next level of details because if you look at the COVID uh, IT framework, it actually has a multiple levels, a, a principal level, but also the detail levels. So it could be at the detail level that you know, uh, Jericho principles or practice is actually also creating a gap. And I'll give you one example. So for example, in COVID, very often if you look through the COVID IT framework, it talks about a central repository of configuration information. Now in the Jericho model, would we have a centralized configuration management? I doubt it. Right, because if, we, if, if you listen to one of the practices is that if I am giving an allowance to buy a, a laptop or some machine, how is that going to be registered and managed? Very much, I am as a user have the responsibility to manage that system and to, to set the configuration to whatever needs is. <laughs> You're talking crazy. Yeah, it's, it's an oxymoron, isn't it? Yes. Well, if you take the hard drive out, <laughs> <laughs> then you might be C2 compliant. <laughs> No, you're right. It's, a, yeah. it's an issue.
actually tech. The problem is the same, whichever OS you buy. Yeah. Right. Okay. One, one question over there. We're running rapidly out of time. So final question from the floor over there. Okay. Good build. Yes, thank you. Panel, final quick comments before we let everyone get away. Let's start from the other end. <laughs> Let's start from the other end. I, I think there's a, there's a lot of value to, to getting some reference systems built. Um, there's some great ideas of, of some larger systems. There's even ideas on smaller technical systems. I know groups I've worked with have batted around. I mean, you can think of very small problems in corporations that every corporation has, like how do you actually control database access and who pulls what data out of a database? I, I'd be willing to vote 10 points to the first person that could stick a plug in on Oracle to actually do real database security. Uh, I don't know, but there's a lot of little problems that every company has. There's a lot of big problems every company has. What we're looking for are some reference systems that start to actually address those and not just say, stick another firewall in. That's, that's the challenge. Michael, thank you. Uh, Justin. One of the things I'd really like to see is that, especially nowadays when we move over into mobile devices being directly connected into the network, I mean, it's not a pick up your laptop and your system, it's all the PDAs. And then the propagation of malware on them and the spyware, et cetera, it's a lot of endpoint of security as well as the, a lack of trust and the true protection of your firewalls can have over the application, the data that it protects. So the system is really how do we combine all of those various components into a definition or an example of how to protect it. And not an easy task. Not an easy task. Stephen. A couple of quick points. Uh, to the um, let your employees buy their own laptop, um, we're not doing that yet, but one of the reasons I brought up all those other identities is we have that situation already because we have thousands of people that are physically or VPNing into our networks with machines that we don't control and have no idea what software's on them. So we didn't choose to do deparameterize as a strategy or anything. It just happened when it we happens. made these yep, absolutely. partnership agreements. And the last question the gentleman back there brought up, uh, we have thousands of applications with no people in control that are running between machines uh, as part of our cooperative design efforts. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Bob? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I had a conversation with Paul a few weeks back in terms of uh, my, my bringing up to uh, my management and my bank one days about uh, how, how the internal network should not be trusted. And this is 2000, 2001, something like that. And, and so bottom line is, uh, in, in my mind, being able to get something on the table that's practical uh, and, and can help address fundamental issues. So I, I've got you know, a large corporation. How, how can I... Uh, implement something that allows my people to do work and, and, and at the same time create the right balance that says I, I can function securely and, and, and raise the level of integrity in, in all the system, the components that make up the, uh, the ecosystem, if you will. And, and that's what I'd be looking for um, in terms of uh, building, uh, building a, a sandbox like this. Henry. <coughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, what I want to say is um, uh, because I've been working out of uh, the Netherlands for what, a year, uh, actually being physically in Europe and working for Philips for a few years now. Uh, the Dutch are very practical people, I can tell you. And so what I'm looking for, or what we are looking for, is a very practical solution as well. And uh, in, in this case, um, the, the second requirement is that the Philips business is very diverse. I, in, in the sense that we have as low tech as you can get, like light bulbs, lighting, and as high tech as medical, healthcare, and things like that. So it's quite a challenge just to try to deal with the different diversity, even in the business requirements. 
So I can tell you that even if we can come up with a reference system for some type, still it will be, you know, uh, a, a put it this way, the business requirements could stretch it to far more than what we're looking for or through the demonstration system. But certainly, at least, that's a good start. Thank you very much. Just remains me to say thank you very much to the panel. Uh, thank you very much to everyone here for contributing. It's been uh, greatly appreciated. It has all, uh, I just heard this thing spin down, so it fitted perfectly onto one disc. So uh, th thank you very much. It will be fed back uh, to the powers that be. And uh, with that, it uh, just remains to say good night. Thank you very much. And um, see, you next year. Enjoy, see you next year. Enjoy the parties. Thank you.